Hello everyone, welcome back to Virtual Sunday School. So you may remember last week was Easter and we celebrated how God made Jesus alive again. We also call this the resurrection story. Before Jesus' resurrection, he taught his disciples many, many things. He taught them so many things that they called him teacher as well as rabbi, which, which means pastor. However, there was this one time where Jesus said the most important thing. Jesus gave us the greatest, most important commandment of them all. And so that is what we are going to talk about today. Our story begins right before Jesus died. He was having a meal with his disciples, his last meal. The supper was over and Judas had just left to go and betray Jesus. It was right before Jesus went out to the garden to pray. But he had just one more thing to tell the people he loved and trusted most in the world. So I'm going to use my imagination to help us tell the story. <clears throat> Hello, my beloved disciples. I have something important I wish to share with you all. Yes, teacher. What is it that you wish to tell us? A new command I give to you. A new commandment? Oh, wow. Yes, an important commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. So just to be clear, you only mean like the people in this room, right? I mean, because I already love everyone here. Not just everyone in this room, but everyone in the whole world. Wait, like everyone, everyone? What if they smell weird? Yes, even if they smell weird, you should show them love. Hmm... I don't know. What if they look different than me or speak a different language that I don't understand? Even them? Yes. Even if you have more differences than you do similarities, you are to love everyone the same way I have loved all of you. But teacher, you can't possibly also mean we are to love our enemies. We can't possibly be expected to love the people who are always mean to us. Yes, even your enemies, even the people who are unkind, you are to love everyone in the same way I have loved you unconditionally. Wait. What about the people who... You are to show love to everyone, no matter what. If you do this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another, we, we can do that. I hope you enjoyed my fun retelling of our Bible story today. You see, Jesus knew that he wasn't going to be on earth for very much longer. And so he wanted to make his last few days count. Not only did he want his disciples to remember everything he taught them, he also wanted them to lead by example. Jesus believed that if the disciples showed love to everyone, no matter who they were, no matter what they looked like, no matter how different they were, then that person who received love may be willing to go out and share that love with the next person they meet. And then that person would maybe share love with the next person they meet. And then that person might show, show love to the next person that they meet. And it would continue to show love to more and more people. The cycle of love would continue to spread. But Jesus was intentional to say, not just any love, but the love Jesus showed the disciples. But how does Jesus love us? Jesus loves us no matter what we do, no matter how bad of a day we're having, no matter how bad we feel, Jesus still loves us through it all. 
Jesus doesn't make fun of us or make us feel bad. Jesus forgives us when we mess up and loves us regardless. That's how Jesus wants us to show love to other people. Offer grace, compassion, forgiveness to everyone you meet. Love people regardless of how they're different than you. Your love and kindness may make all the difference in someone's life. So friends, I hope you can remember to show love to everyone. That is our Bible story lesson for the day. We are going to continue to talk about love just a little bit more. And who better to help us do that than Miss Erin? Today, for our activity, we are going to talk about loving everyone. I hope you enjoy. Good morning, everybody. What feels like a long time ago, before COVID, we would go out to dinner sometimes. And when we did, there's a restaurant that my husband does not like at all. He went to this restaurant one time, probably 20 years ago, and his dishes were dirty. And he said, that is so gross. I hate eating off dirty dishes. That is gross. So we hardly ever go there. But sometimes if we were traveling, driving someplace, it might be one of the only places that we could stop for dinner and we'd go there. Every time we did, my husband would pick up every piece of silverware, every glass, every napkin, every plate, every single dish, everything on the table. And every single time that he does, he finds something dirty in this restaurant. It's amazing. Every time we go, we find something dirty. But do you know what? When we go to other restaurants, we do not pick up everything on the table. We do not look and double check everything and we've never noticed anything dirty. So we hardly ever go to this place, but when we do, we always find something dirty because we are looking for it. Doing something like that reminds me of how we look at people. Sometimes when we go out, it's so easy to see the ways that we're different from people. I can go walking down the street and I can see somebody who wears a different type of mask than I do. Uh, somebody that maybe if I'm wearing a raincoat in the rain because I like raincoats, that person's carrying an umbrella. They might be have different hair, different clothes, a different family, different house, different foods. There are so many ways to be different. As many people as there are, there's ways to be different. And I think I'm not really friends with people who are very different from me sometimes. But as I thought about the lesson this week, I started thinking about my friends. And as I thought about it, I realized if I made a list of all of my friends and for each friend I put their name at the top of a piece of paper and wrote all the ways that were the same and all the ways that were different. Do you know which list would be longer? The ways that were different. But for my friends, I decide, oh, those ways that were different, either I don't really care about those ways that were different. I feel like it doesn't matter if we live in different houses. Or I say, they're different than me. She chooses something totally different than I do, but I really like that about her. I like knowing why she did that. I like talking to her about what's different. It's a good way for me to know about and experience other things without having to do it myself. So with my friends, I know what's different and sometimes it's important and I don't care. Sometimes it's important, it's something I love about them. We find what we look for in people. If we go out and we look for the ways that we are different than other people, we see those differences very clearly. And sometimes when we see those differences, they can be a little bit of a barrier to getting to know somebody. Oh, they do something different for school with their kids. We probably don't have anything in common. I'm not even gonna talk to her. Or, oh, they're interested in all these sports that I'm not interested in. We probably don't have anything in common. 
I don't want to talk to that person. But if I go into pe meeting new people and think about what is the same, then just like all those dirty dishes at the restaurant, I'm going to find the ways that were the same. It might be something like, oh, we do different things for school, but that's really interesting to hear about hers. It's not the same as mine, but it's very interesting. They look totally different and they like different sports than I do, but I still enjoy talking to them about these other things. The things that we have that are the same can bring us together and we can look for the ways that they're the same. There are some people out there, the only thing that I think we have in common is that I am a human on this earth made by God and the other person is a human on this earth made by God. When I meet somebody that I feel like we don't have anything in common, that is the same thing that I see. We're both made by God. And when I remember that, I remember this lesson today of how we're supposed to treat people with kindness. So this week, I want you to take a look around at things in a different way. Look for things that are the same and look for things that are different. You could play a game like Spotted or Guess Who, where you're looking for things that are the same and different. You could do it with the people around you, the people that you see outside. Look for one way that you're different and look for one way that you have something in common with that person. See if you can find the things you're looking for. And once you get very good at finding what you're looking for, try to look for the good. So that's all for this week. Thanks for joining us, and we will be back next week with another story about Jesus. Bye-bye.